Hello YouTube friends, Dr. Teresa here. Well, if you watched any of my previous videos on hatching brine shrimp, you may recall I was having trouble recently getting brine shrimp to separate very well for some reason. I had invested in some decapsulated brine shrimp from a party who really did an awful job. And when you see how the shrimp looks, you'll see why I'm having trouble. Anyway, I came across another inspiring video that helped me figure out a better way to use my hatching dish. The hatching dish was giving me problems because the brine shrimp were dying in there and they were suffocating before they could get to the center. So I'm hatching a new batch. This is supposed to be decapsulated brine shrimp, but I'm gonna pour it into the sieve and you're gonna see there's a lot of brown mixed in there. So there are stuff that was never decapsulated apparently. There are some eggshells in there, but they weren't separating very well. So I've been using this new method. Once I pour the entire contents into my sieve, not only do I rinse it with water, to get any yucky bacteria off or as much as possible from the hatching process. Notice I'm concentrating the entire contents into one area to make it easy to dump into my vessel. And then I just trickle some water on the back of my sieve. And it is just fresh water, but it's only a tiny bit. But you can see there are shells in there. There's no way that's decapsulated brine shrimp. So now I'm gonna use my hatcher. I put in my circular ring baffle. I put in the little collection mesh and I'm going to pour the contents of my vessel to the very outer ring. I'm going to pour it slowly because I don't want it to go into the inner rings. Just pour the whole thing. Now there's a little bit left sticking in there so I'm going to rinse it with some prepared seawater to get that out and after I've done that I'm going to grab more seawater and I'm going to pour it in the center and that's really important because the water will overflow from the center and go to the rings and push out into the outer ring keeping everything that I don't want in the most outer ring. So that would be the dead eggs, the ones that didn't hatch as well as the floating hatched eggs. I am filling up to the water line. If you look carefully, there is a ring that gives an indication of where to stop adding water. And so I've gotten there. And my next step is to just lightly put on my lid. And I'm gonna let this sit in front of a lamp for about 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes. And look how much is collected in that amount of time. Now normally just using that little mini sieve not only takes forever to collect that much brine shrimp out, the shrimp just couldn't get to the center fast enough. The water would get too polluted, it would get too deprived of oxygen. So using the video that I found as inspiration, I see that all of the stuff that I want, the hatched good brine, is in the center while the shells and the dead eggs are left on the outside. So I just take my baster, it's a simple turkey baster, and I just start grabbing as much as I can in those inner rings. And I'm grabbing way more brine at once than I could if I were just using that little mini sieve that comes with the hatch dish. Once my vessel is full, I'm gonna get my sieve and pour this brine shrimp into it and do the normal rinsing process before I add it to my enrichment vessel. And then I replenish what I took out. Again, pouring from the center. Doesn't matter that it's pushing the baby brine shrimp back out again because it will go back to the center once I put on my lid and leave it back under the light. And I repeat that process maybe two or three times before the concentration is small enough that I can just use the sieve without too much brine shrimp dying. So after about three times, well, a couple hours later, that's how much shrimp was left. This is 24 hours later and I still have shrimp alive and coming to the center. So I suspect more was hatching as well as finding its way to the center. And notice it's, it's living because it's not suffocating. And it's, it's not too polluted and this is about 24 hours later again not a ton but 
still it is alive, which is saying quite a bit. So I'm really grateful for that strategy that I found. I'm going to link it in my video below so you can see the inspiration for it. But look, when I'm finished, the unhatched shells and the hatched shells remain on the outside layers. I still have some brine shrimp on the inner layers and that is exactly what I wanted. So this is going to be really helpful as far as feeding the dwarf seahorses and keeping up with all the babies I'm getting. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. Take care.